spirits out there. They will not lead you to truth. They'll lead you to damnation. And you'll know them by their fruit. fruit. Amen. What's the fruit? We don't know that many times. Galatians 5.22. You'll see all the fruit. You'll have there be a gentleness. There'll be a joy. There'll be a compassion. There'll be a long-suffering. There'll also be truth. And that they will not compromise the truth. There'll be integrity. When those things are being compromised, that is another spirit. They can quote this all day long. And that's what's happening. Many people say, well, they quote the scripture. And they start easing off that way. Mm -mm. Be led by the spirit of the living God and his truth. Those who worship the Lord, he's looking for true worshipers, Jesus said, that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Pray, God. Whew, I got lost. Oh, here we go. Chapter 11. Would to God that you bear with me a little in my folly. I indeed, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I espouse you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his civility, so your mind shall be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Y'all hear that? The simplicity that is in Christ. We talked about it this morning a little bit, but there is a people that are modern-day Judaizers. And they're saying, yes, you have to receive Christ, but you also have to do this, that, and the other. Well, I went over a while ago. You've got to jump through this hoop, jump through that hoop, and fulfill this and fulfill that. That is a spit in the face of Jesus' work at the cross. The simplicity in Christ is that you simply believe in the work He provided there. And guess what happens? When you simply believe, like I was telling you, you receive the Holy Spirit and all of a sudden He sets you free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. You don't struggle all your life and struggle, struggle, struggle. He starts setting you free. You feel it immediately. And then when He starts convicting you of little things, He gives you the power to come out of them. You don't have the strength in your own self and you can't make up methods to get out. You've got to trust Him. But they, who, He's talking to a church. He's not talking to unbelievers. He's talking to the church of Corinth who are full of the Holy Ghost. They received Jesus Christ, yet they went what? Backwards. And they started doing what it says. But I fear, lest by any means, as the servant may now heed for this ability, that your mind should be corrupted by the simplicity that is in Christ. For he who comes preaching another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with it. There are people that receive another spirit. That means this spirit is in the church, this spirit is quoting scripture, this spirit is there. It, it, it's confusing because they're preaching. They're preaching. So what do we do? We stay in the simplicity that is in Christ. It is Christ in Him crucified. 1 Corinthians 1, 18, which is the wisdom and the power of the living God. If your faith is anchored, your trust is anchored in His perfect work, work at the cross, you will not be led astray. That, that devil may shake you a minute, but you'll come out because the Lord will deliver you. Now, he said, go back to John, where we was, John chapter 5. I'm moving on. I promise. Man, I'm hot up here. <laughs> yeah, y'all done got it cranked up over here now. Woo, that fire. Verse 25, he says, Barely, barely, I say unto you, the hour is coming. And now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they who shall live, they who hear shall live. You hear that? Very, very, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they who hear shall live. Now, he's not talking about the resurrection, because if you go on down, you will see he addresses the resurrection in verse 28. He says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They who have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they who have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So what is he talking about in verse 25? He says, Very barely I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they who hear shall live. That's not talking about the same thing. It looks like it, but it's not. At first, it's talking about a man that is dead in his sins. Right. 
salvation. But then it's talking about us being a new creature. Yeah, that's what the Lord was putting on my heart this, this evening. You see, we are supposed to be crucified with Christ. We are to die what? Die daily. We die with Christ. We are crucified with That's what baptism stands for. Many people say, for water that saves you. You've got to go down in the water. If you don't go in the water, you're not going to be saved. Man, the water is just an illustration of what's happening on the inner work. It is. It's Romans chapter 6, 3 through 5. It shows you how you go down and you die to the old man. You die and you come up a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed on. All things have become new. And the dead hear the voice of the Lord. You get it? <laughs> when you have died to self, and you're taken up the cross and you follow Him, you hear the voice of the Lord. You're led by the Spirit of God. You see what I'm saying? But if the old man's living in you, if he's still living, if the sin nature's still alive, you're not listening to the voice of the living God. Hello? You're listening to another voice. Do y'all see what I'm saying yet? Yeah. Romans, go to Romans chapter 6 real fast. Verse 3. I'm just going to go through real fast. Know you not that so many of us who were baptized into Jesus Christ, hello, this is a spiritual baptism unto death, were baptized into his what? Death. Yeah. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That old person should be dead, y'all. And that old person still rearing his ugly head. That means that sin nature is still trying to come alive. And the way, the way that is put to death is by faith in Christ and crucified. And the Holy Spirit's power puts him back, my goodness, in his place. Mm. No and void. But when we go walk in the flesh, we bring this joker back to life. And we don't hear the voice. And we don't have that abundant life. How many know what I'm talking about? If you walk in the flesh, you're going to sow. If you sow into the flesh, you're going to reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. It's dead, the Bible says. But if you walk in the spirit, amen? <laughs> By faith in Christ Jesus, it says, Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall also we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth... We should not serve sin. You see that? We should not serve sin. Because that old man's dead. And when that old man's dead, guess what? You will hear. What did it say in verse 23? You will hear the voice of God. And then you're moving and you're operating and you're being led into all truth. And then you start maturing also. And you listen and you're listening to the mysteries of the living God through His Word. He can now teach you. You say, well, how do you know all this? Well, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 